want to talk about didn't get a chance to do a video today so why not live stream it uh if you would like to join us as always you can join discord uh uh, somebody will direct you into the proper channel and you can talk with us. Uh, I will provide that link in the chat if you're there right now. Just give me a, a few minutes. But uh, real quick, let's just start off with... Uh, we're going to talk about the hearings in general and some other stuff. But let's just quickly start out. And I meant to do this, but uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and check out this video of uh, Ted Cruz calling out FBI Director Ray for uh, several things. But... Um, uh, specifically the fact that the FBI tipped off Hunter Biden about the searches that were coming for him. Like, what's that about? The FBI tipped him off? Yeah, they did. And it, just wait till you hear the response to Ray uh, from Ray. He's got none. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, do this. Let me ask you also, the whistleblower testified that investigators wanted to execute a search warrant on a storage unit used by Hunter Biden and instead, they tipped off Hunter Biden's lawyer before the search warrant was carried out. Is it typical FBI practice to tip off the subject of a search warrant before the search warrant so they can remove any evidence that's incriminating? What is typical is that when you're dealing with an individual who has a protective detail, uh, <laughs> it is typical for the agents to be in contact with does the, the subject's protective, protective, detail, protective detail. Does the protective detail guard the, the storage unit? Again, I can't speak to the storage unit specifically, <laughs> but I can tell you cool. is that why, when it comes to... Why would the FBI tip off the subject of a search warrant about the storage unit that was going to be searched beforehand? Does that not undermine the very essence of an investigation that DOJ is purporting to undertake. Again, I'm not going to be able to discuss specific investigative steps. <laughs> but that who we're is? Taking and you're not. Man. Nobody answers these questions, and it's why people are furious with the cover-up because you don't believe the FBI is accountable to Congress or to the American people. Your time is up. Director Ray has requested Democrats a run to the rescue. Recess. Five minutes. I'll just let me just, uh, Senator, if I might just quickly respond and then respond. go to the break. Thank you. I understand why this is frustrating. I do. But it is also the case that these policies that I am referring to about my inability to discuss ongoing investigations and certainly internal deliberations related to ongoing investigations are policies that have not only been in place for many, many years through multiple card. administrations of both parties. No but, accountability. But, in fact, these were policies that were oh, actually strengthened under the last administration right. and that my predecessor was faulted in a fairly scathing Inspector General report oh, for not following. And so does I this have to do with anything? You have an obligation when to I call it out. Engaged in this job. Thank you, you have an obligation to call out corruption. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. The FBI tipped Hunter Biden off that they were coming to search. Uh, they had a search warrant. They tipped him off about it so that he had time to get rid of anything incriminating. And when he asked about that, the FBI director, that's what he has to say about it. Blame Trump. That's what he did. He just was like, oh, well, Trump. Ah. And, 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 and of course, oh, we can't comment on ongoing investigation. It's just like the Trump card uh, away from accountability. And, of course, he ha they had to warn Hunter Biden because he's got a protective detail. So, like, like, what does that mean, FBI directors? Does, it, does that mean that powerful people are unaccountable because they have pr protective details? Like, what in the hell? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in my expert panel in Discord. Oh, you're seeing... Okay, yeah, sorry. This isn't a very um, professional deal here. But, uh, so, yes, yeah, so we're switching. Hello, my expert panel. Like, what does that mean, FBI Yikes. <clears throat> hey, how's it going? Hey, yeah, I could kind of hear myself coming through there. It was weird. I hate yeah, I was, my own I was voice. Watching, uh, watching what you showed on the live stream, that video with Ted Cruz and all that. I got a question for you. Yeah. What What does it mean by protected detail? Like, what What, is, what does that mean? Who's protected and why are they protected? Hunter Biden's protected? Well, I assume, he's, I assume he's talking about, you know, security. Kind of like what the president, excuse me, has. I'm sure that he's got some sort of similar protective detail so he's saying oh well we have that's part of the policy and procedures uh and trump put that i think he said trump put that in place or trump uh let that uh continue or something like that and then said that the fbi i'm not sure exactly what he's talking about but he was saying that 
he was just following the policy almost like it almost came off to me as a sort of condescending sort of backhand like oh well the policy that you're so worried about here well trump put that in place and and then we got a scathing uh 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 portion of this ig report that because we did not follow this policy and so we're just, when we warned hunter biden about the coming surge we were just following policy that you have to warn uh the protective detail or so i don't know he was so vague but it's like when when a when a uh, oversight is asking the fbi director why the fbi is tipping off somebody they're investigating about a surge like that's not the response i want to hear that's just, like what is that well, they're, they're basically saying, with I mean, without clarity, they are protecting him. Why are they? The question then comes, why are they protecting him? Well, I got because the catch-all reason for son? everything they do. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over your head. No, I mean, I mean, it's different when they do it, I, if that's what you're going to say. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. No, I'm not even saying that. I'm saying that, like, when, when, when you turn on the TV every day, and I'm sure everybody saw got a good dose of it over the last few days, especially with... Uh, 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 Cheney doing all of her rounds uh, in the media, warning about the coming apocalypse. Right, the coming apocalypse if Donald Trump gets... I, and, and look, I, going back to when I first started doing this, I've been talking about this. This is why I, ver I very much distrust that side because they're always doing this thing where... It's like, no matter what my actions are, it's justified somehow because here's the reasons and... But that doesn't count for you. That doesn't count for their opponents. It's just them. And that's that's where it's different when we do it comes from, at least for me. But, uh, yeah, it's like, what are they saying? I mean, they're saying that they're unaccountable. Oh, but, uh, yeah, Cheney and them saying that, you know, Trump, he's going to be this huge. It, it's the apocalypse if he wins. They're They're not saying that they're unaccountable. They're saying that they're protected. So... When people go through the normal routes of justice, they're so uh, uh, told in advance that by the time that people show up to look for everything, it just has a gift basket with some apples and crackers in it, and that's all that's left in the. In right, the, well, that's the problem, uh, and it. it's funny because the whole, the whole, like uh, the whole accusation that the Republicans are making that the we the uh, DOJ has been weaponized against uh, against. The Democrats' opponents. I mean, that that's just more proof that that is happening. I mean, look, it, 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 there is no like other side to this. It's all one way, all of it. You know, We're I had I had a mean, point that I was going to get to there, but I lost my train of thought, and I'm really annoyed. <laughs> it's an extreme statement to say that it's all one sided, but I will agree that it's more than ninety percent one sided. Yeah, I, I am I am uh, being hyperbolic when I say that, but. It's pretty darn close. I mean, I'm being hyper hyperbolic because it is like so close to reality. I mean, and yeah, yeah you know. Well, um, so for this this hearing, that was this something that just happened recently? Yeah, yeah, and there's more clips that I want to get into, but I oh, okay. and I yeah, I wanted to make another point because there was another hearing uh, that kind of ties in with what we're talking about here. Um, oh, and my whole point before when I was rambling there was just that like that's th these people are dangerous for this reason. And it's yet another example of it where, you know, it's like the FBI director, the fact uh, that they tipped him. It's like in their mind. Oh, yeah. I remember now I remember how this all started because you asked me, like, why would he do that? And it, it's and I said, there's this catch all reason. Right. And it's that Trump is this ultimate apocalyptic threat right so anything like they, at this point i think these people are gone like they're so gone because they're in this alternate reality kind of bubble where trump could actually do these things which he couldn't it's in, like it's just impossible and i can get into that i've talked about it before but like there's no way trump could do that and so they're living in that bubble and that gives the press you know the press is always biased the press is always pushing uh Real quick, let me just make sure I'm still... Okay, yeah, the press is always, uh, you know, out for the Democrats. But now they have, like, this excuse they can use, right? And and, and then they can, like, just outright openly campaign for the Democrats. <laughs> and, but they can just be like, oh, but we, we have to do this because Trump is such a threat. But And then, ironically, they're the threat because what are they doing? They're actually doing the thing. They're, 
making it so we can have a democratic process. They're basically, they're trying to imprison their biggest opponent. They're demonizing him every night and every day in the, in the free press, you know, making it impossible. Like, ha- what if half the country wants him to be president? Doesn't matter. You all, and and, and, and then this all just gives them Probably the justification. I, I'm sorry, I'll stop after this, but this just You're gives good. them the justification then to deny the election results when he wins, imprison him if need be, and then riot like for the whole four years. You know what I mean? Like, I so there's two points I have in response. Uh, so you're saying that you're saying that the narrative that's being spoken on the left is that Trump is an apocalyptic threat. But the question is, what is like, I'm not for Trump. I'm not for anybody. But my question to them is, what is the threat towards? Is it actually towards democracy or is it towards control? Because right now we're in a situation where it really feels like everything's control. They're, yeah. they're running scripts constantly to make you feel like this is a democracy. But when you start to look into things, everything is narrated. It's a top-down dictated narration, not even from our own country anymore. That's what gets me the most. But then on the other side of the coin, let's say that they let Trump get in. All right. There's going to be riots. Are you kidding me? Look at what happened the last time. If you're not expecting that to happen again, you're crazy. Antifa is going to come right back out or whatever group you call them is going to come out in mass and start burning shit. I know it's going to happen. Absolutely. So They're being like given all the justification they'll need right now. Like that's all being set up now. I Sorry, mean, and, and and real quick, everybody that's watching, we have uh, 53 people watching right now, which is pretty good uh, for us. Uh, hi, but, everyone. Yeah, and I just wanted to introduce, in case you didn't know, uh, this is RW. He is one of my admins, uh, one of the most helpful people that's a part of this whole thing. So I you know, just wanted to shout him out in case you all don't know who he is. Thanks, buddy. But um, yeah, anybody who wants to join us, especially from the opposition, you're welcome. I thought we had somebody. I thought Dank was in here, but... Um, he's busy with this busy did you have more thoughts you want to make because i, I want to um, keep going with this but i, I have more you know, clips I, 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 i'd go to the next clip personally because i i feel like all the thoughts that i'm going to make are the same over and over again right because- yeah well can i just show okay so all the chris ray yeah, stuff is basically that okay I, i'm not going to show it all because it's just every republican making the point that you guys are the threat because you're going after Catholics. You're going after like everybody who's in opposition to the left and Democrats. And all you can say to it is, Oh, I can't talk. To, I, I don't know why you know, I can't say that. Why this? And he just, he just does a bunch of BS, but to the same point that I was making earlier about, um, these double standards, right? Where they, and it's more than double standards because what they're doing is they're essentially trying to normalize, the double standard they're trying to normalize it like yes we have this right but you do not and i it sounds crazy but they, they are doing they're over time it is working in a, in a way and i want to show you uh, an example of that that happened today with riley Gaines, uh and it was a um another hearing today about men and women's sports and riley Gaines, if you're not familiar i'm pretty sure you all are she was a swimmer right you're not familiar with rw is that how you say your name am i saying it no, wrong? I, i'm not I'm not good on sports. That's all. Okay. Well, she's a she's a female swimmer, and uh, she there was a man competing w- with them, and she uh, protested and got out of the competition, I believe, or maybe she got beat by the guy. I can't remember exactly, but uh, she's become like this figure, you know, against uh, men being in women's sports, and she was testifying today. And this female, uh, this uh, rep Summer Lee, she's uh, from Pennsylvania, Democrat. Uh, she, and I'll show you the clip here. Okay. So she accuses, uh, Riley Gaines of being transphobic. Okay. Of course. Right. Cause they have their labels. They always got to put on you to shut you up. Watch what happens after that. And it's very interesting. And it's just so like, I think we all get it at this point. Right. But I just feel like it's like, man, I saw this coming like 20 years ago. They were gonna be, it would get this bad. And it is, it's, th- it's that bad. So here we go. Oh, hold on. I got to drag it over because, yeah, I don't have, uh... here we go. Such as teamwork and goal setting. 
In terms of mental health, studies show that participating in youth sports is associated with lower rates of anxiety and depression, lower amounts of stress, higher self-esteem and confidence. Women must stop. Inclusion cannot be prioritized over safety and fairness. And Ranking Member Lee, if my testi testimony makes me transphobic, then I believe your opening monologue makes you a misogynist. Thank you. Boom. Oh, she doesn't like that, though. Look at and her. Now, thank you, uh, Ms. Watch Gaines. this. Watch I what happens. recognize Ms. Perry for her opening statements. Good afternoon. Watch what Chairman happens now. Lane, Ranking Member Lee and distinguished members of the subcommittee. My name is Sarah Partial Perry. I am a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. As a former varsity athlete, the mother of a girls varsity athlete, and former senior counsel for civil rights at the Department of Education, I have, as the saying goes. Uh, Madam Chair, excuse me, I move to have uh, the gentlewoman's words taken down. <laughs> oh, Drink she did what I did to her? No, 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 no. That's not the way. That's not the way it works. No, no, no. I get to do that. Not you. Just me. Look at this. They literally are doing that. They're going to they're going to wipe her words, which when she called her misogynistic cuz she cuz the uh congresswoman there uh Lee sure she's engaging in personalities. <laughs> Can I just ask how it's fair to be called transphobic? There's a thing. I would say men disguising themselves <laughs> as women are They muted her when she started to call them out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Order, order. Let's let's get a ruling. Uh, fuck you. Look at this. I'm like this. This this is like it, it's such an absurd level. It's reached such an absurd. This is like it's like maybe not purposeful gaslighting, but it has the same effect. Like what is going on here? They literally think they have their own standards and we have another. <laughs> what is happening? Okay, I move to withdraw the point of order. Oh, oh wait, does she withdraw Thank you, Ms. Lee. it? Oh, okay. Um, I now recognize Ms. Okay, Perry I didn't realize that. I think she withdrew it. I think they were like, you. you can't do that. She tried, though. They're like, that Chair would look really McLean. bad. You should not do that, but it's too late. She already did. Okay, I, I just wanted you guys to see that because it's just a, yet another. One of those demonstrations where it's like, look, these people are not good. They're not good people. They're they're a threat to us all because they will do this from a small level, like a small little thing, up to the big stuff. Okay, I have no doubt of that whatsoever. I think they would have no problem rounding us all up, throwing us in prisons or our ditches. Like I really, and they the whole time they'd be like, "Man, I, we have to do this because we're saving democracy." And oh man, at the same time, we're actually saving the earth too because we're getting rid of all the opposition to all the stuff we want to do to save the earth. Do you see what I mean? Like I ha I have no doubt that's coming. Ranking member I don't, Lee. I, well, coming maybe, but we're not at the point where opposition is being thrown in ditches. That's definitely extreme. Well, no, we're, I'm, I'm we're right. I'm saying that's the end road of this. That's where this ends up. Yeah, we're currently at coercion. Like, and and where you said before that they're they're normalizing double standards. I, I think they're doing it because all the people that are pushing back before us and currently are just getting. I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but it seems like it's not getting anywhere for them. So at a certain point, they're just going to stop pushing back. So, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And so you got into your, your transgender sports issue there, which we're going to be watching Lady Ballers tonight on the server if anyone wants to hang out. Um, I'm curious why we can't entertain the idea of, of chromosome-based sports like XX and XY. Like, that's, is that too definitive? Is that not fair? Is, 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 is it not fair that if you're born with XX chromosomes, you're in this category? And X, Y, you're over here. Is that too? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, but that's what we already do, right? It's well, what we before did. we're right. Yeah. Right. What's the, I, yeah, I don't understand what the issue is with it. I would love people to come or even having like a trans league, but like they don't want to do that. Well, one, because there, I don't think there'd be enough. Maybe there would be, but. Um, I think uh, ultimately that defeats it? the purpose of a lot of these people. I, I think there are probably genuinely people out there who have genuine gender dysphoria and they want to live it out. And that's fine. You know, as long as I don't have to like participate, I don't have a problem with it. And they're adults. But I think there is a subset. Maybe even like it seems to be maybe it's even the majority now because it, it used to be such a small percentage. Now that's kind of blown up into like a mind virus. 
<clears throat> and um, I think there's these people, it seems to be a lot of dudes, white men actually, who want to use it as like a way to coerce people and get power over them. I don't know. I mean, I, I've watched lingerie league football. You know, it's it's stupid, but it's girls running around with like not much on. You're like, yeah, I can get behind this. Uh, if they made like tranny football, or I can't say that word on YouTube, maybe. Uh, uh, <laughs> Oof. Uh, lady dudes. I disavow him. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, lady dudes football. We might be surprised, dude. That might get like more views than regular football. We don't know that yet. So. Maybe that's a business model that they can run with and, and, you know, take all those people that are reading books to kids in the libraries and be like, come on, play some football with us. With the LGBTQ, with the LGBTQ uh, suicide rates, I'm not sure how long you'd have a player base. That's brutal, man. Oof. That's brutal. Well, um, I... So yeah, I know we did the transgender Redirect. sports thing, but I, we yeah, we gotta let's let's re pivot back to Ray just because I I did make the the stream on that topic. Uh, let me just play another Ray video and maybe we can just talk a little bit about it. Hold on, I uh, let me grab it here because the Holly one, especially the Holly one. One one second. Yeah, no worries. But yeah, if, if anybody that's watching wants to hang out with us tonight, uh, we'll be watching a movie and hanging out. I look forward to. I'm sorry that I don't do good at speaking with people in the chat. I definitely see you guys uh, typing quite a bit there, but I have to switch between a couple screens, so I'm not really good at that. But, All right, yeah. so I'm still finding Holly, but let me show uh, Mike Lee. He did a good job from Utah, if you're not familiar with him. He's one of my favorites. He used to live in Utah for a while. Nice state. Also, if you're not following me on Twitter, you should, or I'm sorry, on X, I like to call it Twitter X, you should be. Uh, fake news critic guy, uh, it's FN critic guy. Ashley's they won the director of national in intelligence, chat. Hey, stated, quote, on. FBI personnel she's 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 conducted multiple regular queries regular. of an individual oh, sorry. who had good. the same last name as the FBI personnel conducting the query. And on further investigation, what they learned was that this uh, query was made after this uh, analyst at the FBI had a conversation with his own mother. And his mother expressed suspicions about his father having an affair, cheating uh, 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 on her, uh, uh, having an affair with another woman. And so as a result of that, um, they looked into it and the, the, this particular analyst admitted that he ran the queries because of this tip from his mother that his dad was having an affair. Uh, and uh, because I've got a lot of material to cover, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you could give me a yes or no answer to this. Was that analyst terminated? Uh, I'm not sure that I can recall the specific instance that you're talking about, so I'll have to go look at that and follow back up with you on that. And do you know whether the analyst's security clearance would have been revoked? Uh, again, same answer, but let me check into that, and we'll, we'll circle back to hey, whatever you, we can share. Let me ask it to you this way, uh, yes or no. Uh, would abuse of Section he, 702 he just said by back. an FBI employee, would that be something that would warrant the revocation of security clearance? Well, certainly abuse. Uh, I think we'd have to know what the circumstances were. Sometimes that. people have used terms like abuse in this discussion when it's been something other than what I would call abuse, but there have been. that's why we have this accountability procedures that have cascading This example that I've given you is abuse. I assume you would uh, not disagree with that. Now, the September of 2023 PCLOB report disclosed two additional intentional incidents, uh, intentional wrong searches from 2022. One instance from 2022 in which two analysts conducted queries seeking information about a person who was a potential tenant of a rental property owned by one of the analysts. And another instance from 2022 in which an NSA analyst conducted queries on two occasions, seeking information about two individuals that the analyst himself had met through an online dating service. Were the FBI employees who conducted those two illegal searches, were they terminated? Well, you lost me there for a minute. You referred to an NSA analyst? Uh, it, yeah, yeah. So uh, NSA analyst, do you know whether anyone at the NSA uh, uh, was disciplined for that. And if they worked at the FBI, would they be subject to discipline? Well, I, I don't want to get into hypotheticals, but as far as NSA analysts, I think that would be a question for, for NSA. Now, were FBI employees uh, involved in those? Uh, uh, and if they had been, 
would their security clearances have been terminated? Well, again, I, I don't want to get into hypotheticals, but we have, uh, the, we have both the disciplinary process, which is separate from the security clearance yeah. process, and somebody who uh, takes, uh, who engages in a I, compliance violation uh, related to 702 could be relevant to both. I understand. Yeah. I, I would hope that the default answer would be yes, they'd be subject to having their security clearance stripped and be subject to dismissal. Now, in an April 2022 opinion, the, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court noted the following searches of Americans' communications. 19,000 donors to a particular congressional campaign, 133 Americans participating in civil unrest and protests uh, in the summer of 2020, and um, Americans who were in the vicinity of the Capitol, uh, not necessarily inside the Capitol, but in the vicinity of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. The DNI's semiannual semi assessment of Section 702 disclosed illegal queries conducted in 2019 to 2020, quote, using only the name of a U.S. congressman. The FISA court disclosed two particularly egregious searches from 2022. In June of 2022, an analyst conducted four queries of 702 Notice information the using the last background. names of a U.S. senator and of a state senator without further limitation. That. On October 25th, 2020, a staff's operations specialist ran a query using the social security number of a state judge who had, quote, complained to FBI about alleged civil rights violations perpetrated by a municipal chief of police, close quote. Were the FBI employees who conducted those illegal searches terminated, or did they have their security clearances stripped? Yes or no? Again, I don't know that I can speak to specific instances, but what I can tell you, and I think this is important to this exchange, is that all of the instances you just listed off all involved conduct that occurred before the reforms that before we put in reform. place. You're, before the reforms you put in place. Reforms, Who cares? the text of which we don't even have access to. Right. The, reforms that you put in place. It was a I've whistleblower that brought that out. For 13 years. <laughs> Not During the FBI. During the of those 13 years, I've expressed concerns to FBI directors appointed by presidents of both political parties and three different presidential administrations. Every darn one of them has told me the same thing. Don't worry about it. We've got this taken care of. We've got new procedures. It's going to be different now. It's never different. You haven't changed. And you keep referring to these policies, these new procedures. We haven't seen that. We're not even allowed to have access to it. And we have absolutely no reason to trust you because you haven't behaved in a manner that's trustworthy. You can't even, as we sit here, tell me that people who intentionally, knowingly, deliberately violated the civil rights of American citizens, that that they were fired or that they had their security clearance stripped. Okay, so, yeah, basically uh, Lee's whole thing there is we know they did all these things, but there's been no repercussions like at all. Like nobody's fired. Why would they be, right? And and Ray's whole thing is, oh, well, you know, they didn't know what they were doing or I don't, you know, I don't recall. It, it, we're going to have to circle back on that. <laughs> what you're the director and what, look what, i don't trust ray mean? already because he's already he's got such a long history of bullshit what what would actually make a change in all of these systems where they meet and they they don't have to say anything they can ask all the questions they want they can blah 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 what actually needs to happen so that there's a meaning to it all because right now it's just bullshit theater Right. I know what you mean. Like the Republicans are doing all this, but where's like, w like, where's the meat? What what happens? You're showing us that all this is happening and how egregious it is. But in the end, what did I break the to Internet with my good ass question? Yeah, it's good. Oh, can you not hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Oh, yeah, I was responding. Sorry. I, I apparently had to be right on the thing. I was saying that. Um, yeah, it's a good question because they're they're just based. They're telling us. Yes, this is happening. Yes, it's corrupt. Yeah, you know, it's it's out of control. But ultimately, what happens? It's almost like another kick in the teeth. Almost, it's almost you know, it's almost its own boot smashing on your face because they're telling you, yes, this is happening. But no, nothing's gonna. There's not gonna be any repercussions, and nothing will change. It seems that way, right? I I'm no expecting this to play out. Go ahead, pizza. So I was trying to listen. I was listening to what RW was asking. It sounded like you were asking 
uh, how can we, like, our politicians are coming out and asking the FBI. And I think it's a good thing that the FBI doesn't tell the people to a point because uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is just that investigation. If we know how they investigate, then it's easier to avoid their investigations. Uh, but what I'm thinking, I know that that might not be the best opinion, but uh, what I'm thinking is maybe behind closed doors, have them explain like their new, their reforms to the politicians. So at least somebody knows outside of the FBI what's going on. I, I wouldn't be surprised if after this court meeting, they'll all meet behind closed doors and eat Jimmy John sandwiches and laugh and pat each other on the back, buddy. Why you think it's all you think it's all pure theater? Like they know, like they're 100%. all in on it. You really think so? One hundred percent. I mean, I, I, I don't. I I'm at the point where I feel like anybody that's in government at that power level is a part of the club. They might not know exactly how the club works at every single level, but they're in the club enough that they're going to sit there and they're going to obey and they're going to play ball. I don't see any aspect of government anywhere in the world where it looks like the people, the commoners, us people that are bitching on the internet, make a difference. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm blackpilled now. I don't know what to call it. Well, can I, can I offer you a little bit that might change your mind on that? So as somebody who has been at this a while, I've been at this since, I mean, I used, I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh and I get I got in on the uh, you know don't trust the left wing liberal media like back in the late '90s early 2000s you know and I, I saw it back then and um, there nowadays like for me to say that is like <laughs> everybody knows that now like you look at the um, and I'm not saying I did that but I'm saying that like it's common knowledge now like everybody know, like it wasn't just me there's tons of people that over time have been doing it and now eh, like. I'm just one small dude and there's tons of like huge people doing that. There's like a million Rush Limbaugh's out there now. So th there has been some change, I think. There's, there's people that are speaking out against the narrative, yes. But let's look at the world stage for the United States. We have all these people that are running for president and it doesn't matter. The, all the candidates don't really matter. They're all just going through the motions. But in the end of the day, they know that it's between a guy that doesn't even know what's happening and a guy that everyone wants to put in prison. And those are the ones that we have to vote for in the end. But at the same time, we're still going through the motions. To yeah. Me, that shows that the system's broken and that yeah. it's no, I playing agree. itself as controlled. No, I agree a hundred percent. It's definitely broken because it's like they get elected, they get up there and then it's like they're powerless they they realize that at that point, but they still have to pretend because they still have some power with us, right? And so they got to pretend like they do have some sort of power. And because I mean, look at the border. That's a perfect example. There are all these videos now of like just border guards just letting be helping them in. And um, uh, who was it? Uh, who was the right leaning female leader just elected? Um, and she promised her whole thing was like stopping the migrants. And now she just she just agreed to let a whole bunch of Af African migrants in, her, in their country just completely like went counter. It's like the people are it's almost like we're, you know, we're being told you have no power. Like you can whine and complain all you want, but we're going to do what needs to be done or whatever we think needs to be done. It does seem that way. I, you know, it probably is that way. What's what does that mean though? Like if that would mean that we're actually living in a tyranny right now. So what's that mean? What do we do at that point? I mean, I just waiting for uh, them to take away our free speech rights, which, which they're working on. But I just worry that my whole like worry, and I think that's this is the way it'll go is they'll make it as hard as possible to understand like what where the actual evil threat is, and they're going to convince people that the actions they're taking are for like the better good or whatever, and it's going to be really hard for most people to differentiate uh, good from bad, good from evil or whatever in that situation. It's already there, and like once they've deteriorated our ability to redress our grievances with the government through free speech, then what? Well, I mean my. Do yeah. you want sugar-coated response to your question? Or well, you we can't point? really... I don't think we can really get into it, but uh, yeah. I would say walk on eggshells, but go for it. All right. Here's here is a 
nice candy coated response. If you have the ability to move away from the city and get a nice little pretty farmer ranch out in the middle of nowhere, now's a pretty good time to do that while the economy is still working the way it works because it's very possible that in a short period of time that economy may not work that way. And it's very possible that in a short period of time they might move from coercion to persecution for anyone that's not following the narrative. And at that point in time, it might be a little bit too late to get far away from the hubs of chaos, which I call the city. Yeah, that's definitely that's as, true. Uh, sugar-coated as I can put that. No, uh, no, I agree. And uh, it, we're getting there. Like the, the Democrats, and look, I... <sighs> there's a lot of Democrats doing it, but I've noticed in particular, and this is not, I'm not being racial or anything like that, but it seems like the, uh, the demo, the far left kind of Democrat black women right now are, are like, are really trying to float that. Like I've seen it with, um, who, who was the other, uh, uh, lady, what's her face? Um, her name's right on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it all of a sudden, but she, she, I'll, I'll get it here in a second, but she was just, she was floating the whole idea of, oh, like we can go after our critics as heavily as we want. And she's like this other chick. But if, uh, if our opponents criticize us and what we're doing or, and, and, uh, this particular Democrat was talking about, uh, the Twitter files, people and the journalists involved in that. She said that them trying like them doing the stories and investigating, uh, Twitter and all that it was creating threats against the Democrats who were defending Twitter and everything. And that that should be stopped somehow. Okay. And uh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, it seems to be a lot of Democrats floating this idea that we're going to try and, and criminalize opposition to what we're doing and saying we can do all these things, but it's criminal if they do it and we're we're getting really close to it because i mean the media is not calling them out or holding them accountable they're just kind of like yeah well you know we're not going to say much and then when it starts like the popularity of it starts ticking up then we'll start promoting it i guess i'm curious how many people in in the that are watching now and hanging out with us how many of them in their daily life go out and talk to people in the public and and get the vibe like i'm in north carolina i'm in the foothills when i go out and i talk to most people they think something's wrong and it's broken and and they're worried about it i don't experience many people that are the blue haired crew and i'm curious if people in that are watching now get to interact with the blue haired crew and what it's like in real life for them to have this type of conversation and just ask you know what do you think's going on right now what do you think is going to happen what do you want to happen blah 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 I'd be really curious for their insight because I don't get to experience it outside of the internet. Right. Yeah. You wonder how the normies or whatever you want to call them. Cause I do feel like sometimes when I talk to family members or friends who aren't really into it much, they do seem kind of normie ish. Like they just don't really know what's going on around them, you know? And yeah, I, I, those people, that's the people I kind of worry about. I feel like those, and and when we're talking about mass illegal immigration stuff, I worry about those people too because I feel like those people, and especially these, you know, our own like normie people that we're talking about, are going to be easily manipulated and convinced that like what's going on is okay and right. You know, the the term normie frustrates me though because that means that to be normal means that you're not paying attention to anything. You're just um, like watching yeah, you're Netflix, right. Netflix and drinking Bud Light. That's that's what you do. True. You're normal. Keep up the good work. Yeah, for lack of a better term, but or you could say NPC. Maybe I guess that's a better one. But I feel like that's kind of like old now. I don't know. Goon, get your butt in here, man. I see you in the chat. You know where to go, Goon, dude. Goon, what's up, man? Come and debate us. All right. Um, I'm gonna go uh, help my wife here real quick, but I'm gonna play one more, and then we can move on to another topic. I'm gonna play one more Ray video. Now this is the good one. This is Holly uh, ripping Ray and uh, for the FBI targeting Catholics, and it's it is interesting just how like dismissive and just kind of nonchalant they treat it. But we all know, you know, if it was like a Mus if it were Muslims or something like that, or uh, Sikhs, that'd be a completely different story. But let me play it. Interest in your written in, testimony. Boy that you said, and I'm quoting you now, the FBI uses all tools available at its disposal to combat domestic terrorism. What's up? Which now apparently includes the crime of being Catholic. 
Let's talk a little bit about the FBI's <coughs> egregious targeting of Catholic Americans. You have repeatedly been again. asked I'm 10 seconds about the memo the gener generated by the Richmond Field Office. We now know in collaboration with multiple other field offices about recruiting video, sources in Catholic churches. <laughs> you have repeatedly said that no human sources were approached. This is you on July the 12th in the House. You were asked directly by Jim Jordan, do you think that priests ought to be approached to give information on parishioners? You said, no, sir, no, sir. You went on to say, we do not recruit, open, or operate human sources. We do not report on religious organizations. You went on to say, this product, meeting the Richmond memo, has not resulted in any investigative action. But now we know that, in fact, FBI agents did approach a priest and a choir director to ask them to inform on parishioners. So were you lied to when you gave this testimony, or were you lying to Congress? Neither. So the, you are, your question conflates two different things. Uh, there's the intelligence product itself, uh, which the Richmond Field Office created. It was written by, as our inspection found, by analysts in Richmond, reviewed by people in Richmond, and captioned Richmond Field Office product. Separately from that, there was an investigation of a specific individual who was amassing Molotov cocktails and posting about killing people. And it does not surprise me that there were people who knew that subject in that investigation, that is the guy building the Molotov cocktails and trying to kill people, the people talked to the witnesses who knew that person. And I think the product, the Richmond Intelligence product, which cites that investigation, is actually pretty transparent about exactly what I just said. No, I, no, I don't think so at all. In fact, a whistle, the only reason we know this is a whistleblower has come forward and told the House under oath that the FBI went and interviewed priests and choir directors in the Richmond area. The, the House goes on to say that the FBI has repeatedly refused to disclose this information. The only reason we know it is because a whistleblower came forward with it. Just like the only reason we know about this memo is because a whistleblower came forward with it. How many other parishes around the country have priests or choir directors been approached? By the way, are, are Catholic choirs now, are, are, they, are they breeding grounds for domestic terrorism? Is this, is this your latest theory? How many other parishes have FBI agents approached priests and choir directors to ask about parishioners? Look, Senator, we do not and will not conduct investigations based on anybody's exercise of their constitutionally You have religion. done so, and your memo explicitly sure. asks for it. Your memo labels traditional Catholics as racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists in need of investigation. You have a list of churches, a list in the memo. You've repeatedly said we don't target churches, we don't list churches. They're listed in the memo. So how many other parishes have you gone to to talk to choir directors, for heaven's sake? As I've you know the answer to that question. <laughs> no, I don't know the answer to that question. But I can tell you that we don't investigate people for their exercise of their constantly protected, constitutionally protected religious expression. I, I that particular can't... intelligence product is something that as soon as I saw it, I was aghast. I had it withdrawn. Really, you were aghast. I was. And, oh, really? Yes, and what sir. have you done about it? Did you fire the people who wrote it? No, I had it withdrawn. Have you fired anybody involved in it? Senator, if you would give me a chance to answer That's a your yes question. or a no. It's not hard. Have you fired anyone involved in the writing of that outrageous memo about which, frankly, you've repeatedly misled the public? Yes or no? The individuals involved have in that product Have you fired were anyone? Not, just a minute. Were not found to have engaged in any intentional or bad faith conduct. And in fact, Italy. in fact, Senator... A number of the individuals so the involved. No. A number of the individuals involved in writing that product in the Richmond office were themselves Catholic. So the notion oh, I see. that so they were targeting they, their own oh, faith is Oh, so they have to get out of jail free card. I see. I they, see. So you're immune and they're that. immune. So we shouldn't ask questions about it. You haven't done a darn thing. You haven't fired anybody. In fact, what the House found is, what is it? You, you admonished them. They were admonished. And their respective supervisors were told to engage with the Human Resources Division to ensure the deficiencies are addressed. Oh, well, I feel much better. They've been sent to bed without food. Good heavens, Director. This is one of the most outrageous targetings. You have mobilized your division, the most powerful law enforcement division in the world, against traditionalist Catholics, whatever the heck that means. 
and you're just told us you, you have not fired a single person. I mean, here, it gets worse. Your Richmond field office, they thought there was nothing wrong with this. The House interviewed the head of the Richmond field office. He testified. It's all here in the public report. I refer you to it, pages 12, 13, 14. He testified he saw no problem with this. He said he thought it was fine. In fact, we have internal memoranda of the members of the field office high-fiving. One peer reviewer, another member of the field office wrote, I think this is a great product. I really enjoyed the read. Do you have a problem with systemic bigotry against Catholics in the FBI? No. What are you going to do about this? Are you going to fire these people or not? Those individuals have all been admonished, and it is all going Honest. into their, if you would let me finish my answer, it is all going into their annual performance reviews, which has direct impact on their compensation, among other things. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. So the 60 million American Catholics who, we now, who now learn that your FBI has recommended that priests be recruiters and informants, your FBI has gone to Priests, choir directors, but we're to feel better because you've admonished them for their wrongdoing. You, again, are conflating two different no, things. I'm not. When I am we taking are... your testimony where you said you do not. You said categorically, categorically, you said we do not. We do not go to priests and ask them about their parishioners. You said we do not. You didn't say we haven't. You didn't say we won't. You said we don't. As it turns out, you do. And you kept it from the public. You deliberately misled Congress about it. And the only reason we know about it is because a whistleblower came forward. I just That's fundamentally disagree with your characterization. Well, there's no characterization. The facts are the facts. And I fundamentally resent the fact that you have violated, if not the spirit, if not the letter, certainly the spirit of the First Amendment and use your law enforcement agency against Catholics in this nation. Let me ask you about All right, I'm sorry, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was upstairs. Uh, here we go. Thank you for being here. I noticed with interest in your written testimony well, that you then. said, and I'm quoting you now, the FBI uses... Nice to see you there, goon buddy. How you been? Good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm all right. I'm all right. You all have right. any thoughts? Is it your chance to now to talk about fucking... <laughs> oh. So, yeah, what do you guys think what, about what that? Am, I mean... What am I going to talk about? I'm just curious, you, and you know me well, buddy. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious what I'm going to say. <laughs> like Doctor Who or some shit like that. <laughs> you want to talk about Doctor Who and the woke Doctor Who? Oh, is, is drone playing more video? What's going on? No, I'm here. Oh, sorry, guys. No, for some reason, I, I gotta like click on. Uh, I gotta click on Discord for it to transmit when I'm. I get. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, but yeah, yeah, I'm back. Uh, is, are you done with that video? Because I have some questions I wrote down. Yeah, that's the last one. All right, so first of all, Bandit, I see you in the chat. I see you join Discord. If you want to get in here in the chat, uh, we're in the gaming voice chat uh, just by chance. So I look forward to you talking. And then when it comes to the content of the video that you're just sharing, uh, are they only targeting the Catholics when it comes to Christian denominations or churches? And if it's only the Catholics, are they only targeting conservative Catholics because well, that seems to be a world narrative. Yeah, so it, apparently it, it was just this one field office that put out this memo about Catholics specifically, and they were recruiting uh, priests, I guess, as informants in these Catholic, specifically Catholic church churches. Because they've been, that, that, that guy in particular has been pounding on that for like months now, right? Yeah, I mean, it's for no, I mean, I'm sure he's got a bunch of Catholic constituents that are like, don't, don't let this go. And they shouldn't. It's just in the environment that we're in, you know, they're never going to get like media attention. Nobody in the media cares, you know, so. And the current Pope is very, uh, you know, woke and leftist, which makes the Holly kind of Catholic and the Catholic that the FBI is targeting kind of like. Not that we know that these people are out, you know, don't like the Pope, but, you know, it's almost like they're trying to separate like two kinds of Catholicism, maybe. They're, they're definitely, um, uh,
pushing against conservatives because the movement is for the I identity crisis type thing going on in society with people's genders and uh, they're accepting that and he's also the pope himself is also going against uh certain uh, there's a there was a um bishop or cardinal a cardinal a retired cardinal that was pushing against him and if i recall correctly he just removed him from his luxury living retirement situation and threw him out of it because he was going against his his narrative so i thought that was pretty interesting there's de there's a push there's definitely a push amongst the catholic church uh between the two sides of liberal and conservative and i'm not used to experiencing that from what i've paid attention to recently in history yeah i mean uh yeah i don't know i don't i don't really know I'm, i was raised catholic but i don't know what's going on like the catholic community so but um yeah, I mean that's pretty much all I had on the slate. <laughs> I'm sure I can what find is, something else to go into here actually. What what is the so for this hearing that's happening and the, the videos that you've shown, how long is there meant to be hearings yet and then what is meant to happen at the end of it? What is what is the goal? Well, I think this is part of this might be part of the weaponization of let me see real quick here. Uh That's what I thought it was, but uh, well, it was the Senate Judiciary. Here we go. It's the uh, Senate Oversight Bureau, so. Oh, okay, so they're discussing the potential renewal of surveillance powers. And so they're saying, like, these hearings are like, why should we give you these powers when you're using them as a weapon against the Democrats' opponents? Do you think it's going to make enough waves that will stop them from getting what they want? No, probably not. I'd say negatory. In fact, I'd laugh you... at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's depressing. Do you guys across the pond have any thoughts on us crazy Americans and what we're dealing with? I mean, <laughs> I've only just joined in, so I, I have no idea what you're really talking about here. Neither do we. I come, uh, come on the back tail of the things. So. Oh, oh, hold on. Let me jump in there real quick. Doc Holiday with the uh, big <laughs> he's big spender five dollar super chat here. Pete Buttigieg is the hot dog eating champion of DC. I believe it. Um, well, if Doc Holiday says that, I believe it as well. I think he he's a historic figure, so I think that counts as a um, <laughs> trustworthy. Uh, factual figure. I don't think <laughs> Doc Holliday would ever lie. I don't think I'd nah, go. Tombstone that. portrayed him as a pretty good guy, so I'm gonna go with that. Well, Tombstone was amazing. <laughs> um, but to go on what you were, your your original question was, a pretty was, amazing dude. Somebody <laughs> just walked over your grave. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Welsh. I got two here yeah. right for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from. I mean, I, I've kept a reasonable eye on American politics since 2015. Um, and from what I can see, um, I know that I, and this is from a little bit of a distance at the moment with Hunter Biden's laptop, but you can, you know, you can see that the way they dealt with that in October 2016 um, by controlling um basically calling it a fake uh the three-letter organization is supposed to be there to protect you and they're actively lying about the contents of it and it's you know where it came from but as it turns out it's all true etc they said it was all fake and from what i'm seeing now i'm thinking it's just it, they're just going through the motions again and it doesn't even matter what evidence they got against certain families in America, like the Bidens at the moment, nothing will happen. Um, and I mean, Trump looks like he might get done for something at some point with all the other, you know, you know, well, with the, the way the court. I would say the, uh, I would say the, um, the one case, I, I don't know. I think they're all going to fall through because the, the, uh, the, um, fraud case, I think that that looks like it's falling through. Because the witnesses were like, this is all normal, and it doesn't matter like what he would have 
it doesn't matter the quotes or whatever he gave the appraisals like we would have given the loan anyway and this is normal practice and so that's probably going to fall through they keep like reaching on that and the january 6th thing is also like just total bs like just yeah, yeah. It, that i don't understand how it got as far as it's gotten to be quite honest like that that just shows how far we've fallen well but basically you know they they walked into a trap didn't they it was set up for them and they walked straight into it uh, so 100%. Think, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty well, sure that and, that whole thing was a and le- le- legacy media um and the democrats it's, it's, it is very much one sided the way the, the, <laughs> um it's like the Ray Epps biz- business isn't it getting, getting done for a misdemeanor but then calling people to storm right. the capital. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, that that whole thing is insane. Yeah. You know, and he gets nicked two and a half years after everyone else. And he gets a misdemeanor, fucking no time served or nothing. Literally, early. right, and literally only because people were raising a fuss about it. Like, if nobody had ever said anything about Ray Epps, you Correct. really think he'd have ever been charged? No. So, so, so I watched that sixty minutes interview with Ray Epps. Uh, I, I watched it knowing, you know, what I was watching, and I put a comment in, and it was, it, it was like two weeks after it was released, or like four weeks. It had loads of responses, which you never really get on a like late video. And I put it in there. That's all I put in there was, i have now after watching this video, I've never been more convinced that Ray Epps worked for a company that works for the FBI. Whether he worked from directly or something, uh, uh, he he he's, he was definitely there for a reason. He was definitely encouraging. Uh, people to do things they shouldn't do, um, and they completely ignore it. And yet, the evidence against this Ray Epps is so plain and clear. You know, it's audio. He's saying it. It's on camera as well as audio, whispering in the ears. Baked Alaska. Yeah, we're going to storm the Capitol. Oh. Yeah, literally saying storm the Capitol. I know. That's that's to me. That's just like the icing on the cake. It's like, oh come on, like that's too on the Ann, nose. <laughs> and then we got Ann Coulter. Who, who, who now, you know, after watching, you know, remember she said that Trump was gonna, Trump was gonna be the rebellion when laughter and all that. She's talked some sense in the past. Now I don't know if you've noticed, John Tech, she's now saying that the that, that the Patriots picked on Ray Epps. Yeah, I know. I I she said Ann Coulter. Yeah, I did a video on it. It was you that did the video, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watched the video then. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Ann Coulter, Ann Coulter, who has been called, you know, going back to uh, the Bush years of being, you know, she's been accused of being a racist far right lunatic, you know, and now suddenly she's getting on with the New York Times to say, oh, this Ray Epps thing is just wacky conspiracy theorists. And I say this because (laughs) there was a New York Times article and the New York Times article told us what happened. And and it's like, what? (laughs) What? <laughs> and and how he lost his business and they're in hiding and it's like okay uh, what and then not like and he you can see she's something. reading off something the whole time like she's literally yeah, reading he, off of something the whole the, like the entire thing and it's like he, what he, is he this said, oh, we're going to the capital or something like that <laughs> yeah oh yeah she totally blows off she's like and Tucker Carlson this wag she didn't say wag she was lumping him in with like wacky conspiracy say Tucker Carlson played this video over and over of Ray up saying uh I yeah. don't know enter the Capitol or something and she like rolls her eyes as she says it it's like <laughs> yes, I, like I can almost not contain myself anymore at that point it's like I, I, I don't know what's going on here but it's absurd <laughs> So, yeah, I think you're up against it just as a general of rule of thumb. The law seems to be going against, like you said, that, I mean, it, like the FBI then, you know, being questioned about the Catholics. I remember this coming out about 18 months ago or a year ago when this all came out. And, they, they, you know, what the fuck are they doing? I mean, seriously, is, is that where they think their problems are with Catholics that maybe don't agree with a lot of this modern, I don't know, degeneracy that's going on? I mean, fucking hell. Yeah, let me um, let me play that actually, uh, real quick, just because we're talking about it. People may not have seen it. Uh, oh, did you want to say something, RW? I got to get it ready. Yeah, I'm just curious if Welshie can share uh, if anything across the pond is kind of mimicking the same narrative as happening. Uh, I'm not oh. sure how many people here in the chat are are used to overseas uh, politics, but 
I feel it's like maybe. it's the world experience what's happening right now with the left and the right. And I'm curious if you can. Uh, uh, yeah, relate. there's so much. There's, I mean, I, I know I, I got really interested in the politics, obviously, when Trump started coming in, just it was entertaining, if nothing else. Uh, there's so much mirroring. There's so much mirroring, like the immigration thing, Burn sweater markers, like your, your eight... housing. Like, I don't know what the numbers are in America, but um, currently for us, eight point two million pound a day in hotels, of fifty thousand um, asylum seekers, just on a concurrent basis. And I, you know, obviously, I, you know, the sort of things that are going on where the borders are left open, they're not tackling it. It's all mirrored. It's, it's like it's it's how does it's that a work in your island though? Oh, yeah, don't don't forget. Um, you know, we you know we, we fought against the Nazis. We had uh, you know Dover is where basically um, we fought off many evasions because it's the closest point to France, twenty two miles, and yet we can't stop. Uh, you know, a, a, a load of young males in a dinghy. Yeah, somehow. it's like it was. They sent over the brain vi- the brain virus first. And then, or like infiltrators or something that then recruited and they're just destroying us from within now. It's some sort of master plan that is, it, we're just watching unfold and there's nothing we can do. I mean, Here, uh, you go I mean video. Can uh, I, I just want to, I want to uh, oh, yeah, yeah. make a comment to Lamont in your YouTube chat. Oh, did he just get booted? Shut Never mind. Right there's right a guy that was basically saying that he doesn't appreciate like white racists and he's calling he's like you white racist this and that and so i'm just i'm curious he's gone now i think but like was he really experiencing white people in his life that were coming up to him and being racist or is it just internet jargon who who i didn't see him uh oh lamont no nah, he's gone someone i think i think millionaire took him out anyway i just i hope that he's not actually experiencing that in real life and it's just like something he's saying on the internet because besides the old people that live around me that are from that generation i really don't see it uh, uh, yeah and uh, i'm just just like uh, just a, a, I, li- I live in wales and today there was uh, a, a heavily pregnant woman that was stabbed repeatedly uh, by an ex-boyfriend that turns out he's a romanian immigrant again and like two week two weeks ago it was the the the, the, the children being stabbed by another Algerian uh, migrant. And like I said, Europe's like a tinderbox at the moment. It's just you know. Yeah, let me I actually have a clip I wanna play uh, in relation to that. Uh let me let me play this real quick just because we were talking about Ann Coulter. Let me just throw this out there for anybody who hasn't seen it yet because it is pretty wild. Let me it sh- this will just be the clip. I think there might be my little meme things in there, but one second. They love me, folks. Specifically, talk about the Ray Epps case because I mean, even people I like um, and I think are usually pretty sensible right wingers, um, they are all down with the with the Ray Epps conspiracy theory. Now, and and Come on. what's up with this guy's well, eyebrows? Democrats He's got like really Vegeta eyebrows. I've spent my life covering them. see what you're saying. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I hate like, for anybody watching. I hate Christopher got, Ray, the head of like the FBI. Eyebrows. But the New York Times, sorry, I often hate the New York Times too. Weird. <laughs> had a full and complete description <laughs> of why Ray Epps was there, mm-hmm. um, how he was defamed and had to sell his business and his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a true Trump supporter. He was going right. after his nephew. The the clip that Tucker kept playing of him saying, and then we're going to go into the Capitol or something like that. A human. <laughs> that was the night before. The right. day of, he and the person he was whispering to both told the FBI separately, no, he was telling us, don't go in, don't go in, don't go in. What the actual fuck did you just say to me right now? He literally had to sell this going business he had in Arizona with his wife. It was a wedding venue. Now they're in hiding. I want to talk to this guy. I mean, there's a lot of it. The way the New York Times lies is by omission. They don't tell you things that are really sort of a relevant part of the story. No shit. All right, so I wanted to play the whole thing for you so I could just... So yeah, yeah, that whole that like she told here's this is what happened with uh, Ann Coulter. 
She's getting very old now. She's got nobody cares about her. You know, oh, the media. She's I mean, she she's in obscurity at this point. I mean, even at her height, I was never a huge fan. I was like, hey, I, I like Ann Coulter. I like. I never was like. A, I didn't follow her. You know what I mean? Uh, but she would appear on Rush Limbaugh and Tucker and stuff like that. Uh, but now she's obscure. Nobody cares about her. So the New York Times or somebody offered her a bunch of money to be like, hey, come on and uh, 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 you know speak out against the Ray Epps thing. We'll give you a, a big paycheck, maybe a gig. You'll get a gig. Maybe you'll be a you know a columnist here on New York Times or wherever. You know, doing something. I have no doubt that she would do that. Why not? I think the carrot on the end of the stick is blue. It's bl- what do you mean? Well, the carrot on the end of the stick that she's chasing after, I think it's blue. It's just symbolic for it's, it's liberal, it's left. And if she yeah, wants to reach the carrot, blue. she has to obey. She wants, she, yeah, or she was just always, you know, a, a controlled opposition type figure. Who knows? Well, I don't know. It, it makes no well, sense well, well, to me because everything she said there, it just it sound every single one of her yeah. points was dumb. Like really dumb. Well, like I couldn't. Well, she didn't. Say, yeah. So, sorry, Ryan, but she didn't say storm the capital, did she? She said, "Let's go into the capital or some, capital or something like that." Yeah, but even that, Which the is, way she blows off such a big point is odd, to yeah, say the least. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my point. That she's she's got it wrong or something like that at the end as well, right? Where it's a big difference. Well, you know, go into the capital, storm the capital. But either way, it's not it's not a thing you should get wrong. Right. It's like if you're going to speak so authoritatively about this, you should it shouldn't be like or something like that. Like you should know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Like and what she you're does. saying. Yeah. She does not. She does. She's just she's reading. Like, reading. I don't know if you yeah. paid attention there, but she's definitely reading off like a script. Which, hey, look, when I do my videos, I make a script, but I make the script. It's not even a script. It's just like notes. And sometimes I'll look at the screen because just keep my train of thought, you know, and what I want to say. Just to keep the video, you know, anyway. But that's not what she's doing. She's literally just like reading some talking points that she was sent, emailed by whoever paid her. And you know what? I know that this is what happens, okay? Because I get sponsors, and guess what they do? They email me talking points. <laughs> yeah, but the worst thing about that is that she's, she's mostly seen the same stuff we've seen. So she knows the real story. She knows exactly what the form is. Yet, I don't think she's clueless to actually what the reality is with Ray Epps and what what, what was all that about. She just had to literally just fumble and bullshit her way through the interview. That's what I believe. Right. It, it was just, it was embarrassing. You know what it reminded me of was, uh, uh, what's his face? Um, I'm mad I forgot his name already, but he did that interview uh, about Hunter Biden on that podcast and in the, in the interviewer, you guys know what I'm talking about? And the interviewer just like slapped him around. Hold on. Uh, anyway, it reminded I me of that. One. I know uh, the one. I know the one. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't think of the guy's name, but he just got smacked around. It was embarrassing. It's like yeah, these the people time, who yeah. are supposed to be the professionals and our betters are nowhere near as informed as we are. <laughs> like nowhere near it. <laughs> like yeah, what I, I, what I, motivation do they have to be? They get paid and they get they get accolades and they get pats on the back for just repeating the narratives yeah it was funny because they said no like this has all been confirmed now this is like and they're like what and you can see their face drop and the, <laughs> i think it pulled yeah. it apart like two or three points in a row and by that stage it was a car crash wasn't it oh yeah he's like well i gotta go he, he in, and to his credit he had been on the show for a while and getting smacked around for a while but then he was just like oh i'm gonna go now because you're <laughs> this this is getting too uh here 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 let me here just because we're talking about it i'm just gonna play a clip of it one second i'm gonna, I'm gonna get yeah, it ready please. here it's ready please. just because we're, we're talking about it and it's funny as crap so let me just throw it out there real quick i have to get some chores done real quick i'll try and get back as soon as you guys have some fun hello and welcome so. back thanks for watching i Hold on. i don't want to do that hold on one second here oh here we go we'll just we'll just we'll just skip through it here um, so you i asked somebody i don't want to say his name who is the smartest well, the guy world. in america yeah who thinks that the hunter biden story is a nothing burger okay and and 
this guy told me Philip Bump. Oh. So I am um, of the opposite opinion. Okay. And I want to talk to the person, the smartest person I can find on planet Earth right. who disagrees with me. That's great. Okay, well, I hate to disappoint you, but I, I, I would not say the Hunter Biden story is a nothing burger. Okay. I would say yeah. that the effort to extrapolate from Hunter Biden to his father is at this point a nothing burger having been a business partner of Hunter Biden's, uh, that there would be times, 20 occasions, he said, over the course of something like a decade of the two of them working together, uh, during which, uh, in particular, Joe Biden would be calling his son Hunter. Hunter would pick up the phone as he was in a meeting with other people, put it on speakerphone, and say, hey, here's my dad. Dad, say hi. Do I think that Joe Biden, when he was cognizant of the fact that Hunter Biden was in those meetings, was aware that Hunter Biden was probably using that as a way to bolster himself? Yes, I think he probably was aware of that. Now you see now... You know, fucked up, you know that, don't you? Does that mean that Probably, he, or, or for sure. I don't know. I can't read his mind. But I think, yeah, he's probably aware of it. Uh, who, how many times... Look, I'm, look I'm, I work for the Washington Post. Probably he's, means for he's sure. He's already <laughs> realizing he's screwed times, up. Have you ever called up and had conversations about the weather with strangers? <laughs> Never. Strange? I, I don't understand. I'm he, saying he that. wasn't calling. He wasn't calling Hunter Biden business associates. He's calling his son. <laughs> but wait a minute! Didn't Bump just admit that Biden probably knew that he was helping <laughs> his son's business by making interviews. those calls? Do I think that Joe Biden, when he was cognizant of the fact that Hunter Biden was in those meetings, was aware that Hunter Biden was probably using that as a way to bolster himself? Yes, I think he probably was aware of that. I, I don't understand. I'm he, saying he that. wasn't calling. He wasn't calling Hunter Biden business associates. He's calling his son. Right, but and this then, was particularly in but, the time then, after Bo Biden had died, and he was building a stronger relationship. Well, with his son. normally, <coughs> normally when you get a call when you're in a meeting, you say, "Dad, I'll call you back." And then, yeah, but that was meeting. Hunter Biden's decision, not Joe Biden's decision. Was Hunter Biden no, trying there, to there leverage also, those calls? There, certainly. Archer also said that Hunter called Joe. He said sometimes. there were occasions in which that had occurred. Yes. yes so, right. that, so, but, but if you do, you have children. Yes. If your son calls you, do you know what it is or do you just take the call? Do I think that Joe Biden, <laughs> when he was cognizant of the fact that Hunter Biden was in those meetings, was aware that Hunter Biden was probably using that as a way to bolster himself? Yes, I think he probably was aware of that. No, I, I well, no, I, I don't. If I'm in a business meeting, I'll usually. But won't. that's not, right, that's not what you're saying. You're saying Hunter Biden called Joe. I, mean, I got to skip if, ahead if, here. If, if Joe starts, Biden picks up Hunter Biden's ahead. call, and Hunter starts like really falling apart. Me with things that have been debunked multiple times that I've written about. It's been debunked. These claims, I've written about this, about this this argument about his dad calling him. I've written about this. Did you read what I wrote? It's not debunked. Neither of us were there. Well, I, I debunked it in the standpoint that I've already addressed this and, and presented the counter arguments to it. Okay. Like, so. I debunked it. I absolutely can see the I point. I debunked it because amazing, I disagreed with it in an article. Biden took bribe, but that may, what that do may you come up. What do you take from the text message to his adult daughter? Uh, Hundred text messages. Yeah, I have so to give fifty percent of my income to Pop. I have no idea what that means. I don't. I have no idea what that means. Well, it's it's it's. it's it, I know it's circumstantial evidence, and you prefer that. No, did, I appreciate that, your. Has anybody has anybody know. asked her? I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't you think somebody should ask her? Okay. Like I, I'm not. I just said I don't know, and I don't know what to make of it. So I have nothing yeah, else to say about it. Right there, Hunter's text says half of his income goes directly to the president. Thanks. I don't know what any of that means. Anywho, ready for lunch. Yeah, what but doesn't. Well, hold on. I gotta at yeah, least show you. There's where he no leaves. evidence. No evidence. But then there's a text message where he says, "I give Pop fifty percent of my money." That's that's evidence. Okay. Well, what? Okay. Fine. Fine. So it's evidence. I appreciate you having me on. It doesn't. It, that something like that. Who do you think is being more? I, I listen to that. I'm saying. Am okay, I? Am I? What, okay, you, you can free you, to go. I, think, I feel you want me to leave. Like just walk out in the middle leave. of this. Because that way you can. You like, can I feel like you want me to leave. Is this the standard? Really? This is the way the Washington Post handles people who disagree yeah, when with I, them. Yeah. When I agree to be on for 45 minutes. All right. Anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, I played that. Sorry. All right. Anybody there? Everybody still there? Real quick, I want to read out uh, Doc Holliday. Um, said, "Love your videos, Drone Tech. It's a shame you get throttled by the algorithms." Thank you, Doc. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if that's what it is or if it's just my content's not, you know, as good as it was. I mean, hey, I got to admit, you know, I uh, I have three kids, one baby, one. I, I, I'm not going to call him special needs. He's not special needs, like, but he does require a little extra help because he's got some, a little couple things going. Uh, but, you know, it's tough, and it takes a lot of my time, a lot more than it used to. And I'm doing the best I can. And I think maybe I'm just not 
I don't know. Maybe I'm just not doing the right things on the videos. Whatever. I'm just I'm going to keep doing this whatever the algorithm does. I don't care. I'm just going to keep doing it. So, thank you, Doc. I appreciate it. Oh, Doc again. <laughs> thank you, Doc. Man, he's so giving. It's Christmas early. Doc is uh it's 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 uh Christmas. Uh am I the only one that thinks it's odd that seven capital police officers committed suicide over January? I don't think it was seven. I think it was two. I don't think it was seven. I think it was a couple, but even that's odd. I, I, if anybody's around, I do think that is odd. Uh, I, and maybe it was three, but the media definitely try. The media is all about connecting these suicides to January sixth, and I have so many questions, so many questions, and it's very odd. And everybody else should think it's odd that nobody asks questions about that. And I think that's because the media basically portrays it as. Worse than 9-11, worse than Hiroshima, or, you know, whatever. They Worse than the Civil War. It was an insurrection, an armed insurrection, they always say, when the arms consisted of flagpoles, right? But And, and then they show the gallows, even though the gallows was like a miniature and not functional. You know, it's the whole thing is uh, Hollywood production almost. And uh, that's part of it. Early on, they were saying, uh, Brian Sicknick was beaten to death with a fire extinguisher these police were killed that was a lie off from the very beginning he died of natural causes there was no blunt force trauma uh there's no proof whatsoever that had anything to do with january 6th and then these other officers co committing suicide like okay immediately my question is one why did they commit suicide because of a fairly minor riot in, involving less than 400 people which is pretty small compared to what they had been dealing with, you know, years prior. Uh, so that's one question. And, and you know, is there any evidence any of these police who killed themselves had any, like, violent interaction or anything? I, I've not heard anything about that. All I've heard is that, oh, yes, because of what happened on that day, they just couldn't live. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then my next question is, did they do something on that day that they couldn't live with? Is that why they killed themselves? Or, lastly, did they not actually kill themselves? Were they taken out because they were part of something or saw something that they weren't supposed to or they took part in something and it was they were a loose end? I don't know, but the whole thing is very strange. And I only think it's strange because the media is so determined to use that as to bolster the whole January 6th narrative. Anyway, I'm done. Yeah, that's that's definitely one hell of a rabbit hole. Uh, I don't I don't exactly know what to comment on that, but I can understand each of your viewpoints of the possibilities. I do want to give uh, Doc Holliday some respect for uh, helping to support you. I know that it's not possible for all of us to do that, but the fact that he can is great. Yes, and, thank um, you so much. I, I got to hang out with Drone Tech the other day. It was like three hours, three and a half hours. He streamed his process of uh, him compiling his video in the background. And after three and a half hours, he he spit out a 10 minute video clip that he posted to the Internet. I'm trying to get him to uh, do a live stream of him doing that process. so You guys can appreciate, you know, how his eight his eight hour day turns into 10 minutes for you guys to appreciate. But if uh, if he live streams the process, we can pick on him while he's doing his stuff. So <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because I was actually, uh, I, I think I am going to live stream uh, some a few of them on your recommendation. Actually, I used to. I told him uh, if you look at my, some of my old live streams, I actually did that a few times. Uh, maybe not in the best way I should have done. He RW has offered some uh, suggestions that I think are great suggestions that I'm, I'm going to try a few times. But then, if you want to watch those afterwards. I am going to make that a Patreon thing to where you can come. If you uh, subscribe to me on Patreon, you're going to be able to come and watch that in Discord and just hang out with us while I work on that stuff if you want to. I don't know. Some people might like that. RW seemed to think it was cool, like you just said. So, yeah, I'm going to stream it a few times, but then that's going to happen. I'm going to make you pay for it. <laughs> Behind closed doors. Yeah. So I'm, hey man, thanks. That that makes me uh, that makes me feel. Oh man, Doc did it again. He did it again. Five dollars. Thank you, man. That's twenty bucks from you. Thank you. He said, but not one single officer committed suicide. The Pacific Northwest. All right, not one single officer committed suicide in the Pacific Northwest during the 2020, 2020 summer of love. And that is worth mentioning because uh, in twenty twenty alone, you can look this up. 
over 60,000 officers injured, over 60,000. And anybody who followed that stuff, we know uh, there was the attack on the White House uh, in, I believe, June of 2020. Uh, there was the um there was uh uh i'm sorry I, i'm i'm trying to think of it there was another big incident i'm trying to think of it but uh there there was several big attacks on police during that time and that was just 2020 like go back to 2015 when the when the media started lying about uh cop shootings to try and incite riots think about that they're trying to charge trump right now before an election for inciting a riot, even though I, I made the argument a million times, I'm not going to go into it, but it's absurd. Uh, but yet they incited years worth of riots that led to people dead, communities wiped out, businesses wiped out, 60 over, well over, probably hundreds of thousands of police injured. Have you ever heard of a suicide? Have you ever I mean, heard, think- have you ever heard of anybody charged for injuring any of those police officers ever? But when, when he's talking no. about the, the officers up there not committing suicide, if, if you from what I remember seeing in the Northwest, when Antifa was riding and, and burning the buildings down and stuff, it, it looked like the police officers were trying to protect people or protect the buildings and, and protect what they believed in. And then for January 6th, there's the possibility that they were told that they have to put on a show and some people might not have been able to live with that in the end. I think... That is probably the truth. To me, that seems like the most... That's the uh, uh, Oscrum's razor right there. Uh, I, I, I would Ocrum's, tend to agree Ocrum's with you. Oscrum's razor. But, but, but it's, it, you would say, I would say that's quite conspiratorial, isn't it? Is it, though? It, it, I can't... I'm not going to sit here and try and what? prove it. That's just my own discernment, I guess. Right, but like well, the, uh, the official it, story's got no explanation point. whatsoever. It makes no sense. It's just like, what? It's just to make the point that I think we all, we we all look down. I mean, me more than most. Yeah, you know, looking for conspir- conspiracies. Real quick, but, real quick. Doc Holiday did another five dollars super chat. Thank you so much, Doc. They turned down, or they tried to burn down police stations with officers officers inside. Yeah, they did that on. Uh, they burned down a guard post oh, at the White House on in June of 2020, and almost a church, a historic church, and uh, in Portland. Portland in Portland, they tried to burn down a precinct. Uh, yeah, yeah, and if if you got any any of you watching right now, get on YouTube, look up Portland riots. And just look at the, like, almost, it looks like a military almost launching an all-out assault I mean, on federal buildings in alive. Portland. I feel like there's a there's probably quite a few of us For here months. right now that watch that shit happen live. Right, all of us did, yeah, I think, dude, probably. I, watched, I, watched I mean, I was show. watching, yeah, during those times, I was watching it almost constantly, all day long. I, I remember I'm quite familiar were, with it. Were, <laughs> They were, throw, they were throwing petrol bombs at, at the departments. It was all boarded up. I mean, it just looked like a boarded up building, basically. But yeah, it didn't go up on anything. But they were launching bloody launching uh, uh, Molotovs at the front, like where they could. But you could see the sort of police inside, sort of dealing with a little bit of flame that was going inside. But it's crazy. Well, they even threw like actual Poland. bombs. There were there were like I don't I don't know if they were dynamite. But they were there were like actual bombs thrown, multiple ones. There's video. There's some videos. I only there. ever remember not fireworks, fireworks. Not fireworks. There was uh, at least one here. Let me see if I can find it here real quick. It's probably hard to find now. I uh, re- I tell you what. I, I, you, you, you know the Battle of um, is it, ba- is it of Portland? Uh, is it uh, Battle of uh, Berkeley three? I think it was that footage. Battle of Berkeley. Yeah. I just want to play the sound uh, clip for Doc Holly real quick. This is for you, buddy. You make me want to be a better man. (laughs) Yeah, Doc, man. Really, I appreciate it. I really do. Every little bit helps. (laughs) Especially these days. (laughs) Not getting the views I used to. you know. But you know what? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, and I think it'll come back around eventually. Hopefully. Because what am I going to do now? I haven't done I, <laughs> my, I had done IT like all my life up until this. And it's like I've been out of IT now for 
six years or something, I think I'm useless at this point in IT. This this is still internet technology, man. I know, but it's different. It's uh yeah, maybe I could get into like video editing or something like that, or graphic design. I don't know, maybe. Like uh, you know, I think I've said this before, but when I first got with my uh uh ad agency they were really surprised that they thought it was like a team of people that did these videos. They were really surprised to find out it was just me. That and your four kids, right? You all right. I'm, well, yeah, I was just, well, I didn't have four like, kids then. I had two. So, so what's happening, Ryan? Are you getting no, you getting no traction at the moment. What do you mean? Dude, he's bald tires in the mud, bro. Yeah, man. It's just, um, I mean, there's been. I, I just want. I, yeah, I watch your video. Look at how many views you get. Yeah, I know. Well, it matters. You know, it doesn't. Ultimately, yeah. it doesn't matter to me, but it does because I've been there. You know, I've been at the high point. And I want to get back there. You know, it's like chasing the dragon. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I, I like the format you do um, with a bit of comedy, um, and the and the videos are nice and short as well. I like that format. You know, it's something I I, I can quite you know quite easily listen to it's not like a 15 minute video where you you know sometimes that's like seven minutes too long as far as i'm concerned on a lot of occasions so no i i think the way you, the way you do it and and like i said if for example you haven't changed your format which i don't which i don't think you have and you're now not getting the views you were getting you're definitely in the in the bad books at the moment yeah it's, 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 it's you know it's it's ups and downs but uh partially right now I'm my own worst enemy just because I am not doing daily and if you look they'll say oh you know there's no proof that doing daily will help you with the algorithm daily, but it does works. I, I, I know a couple of YouTubers in the UK called DJ Audits and he does a video 4 o'clock every day he's very good at his job he's one of the best in the UK at it which probably is and it, the views he get is because he does daily 100% regular downloads, which is like you said, and the algorithm of all accounts, they keep saying it, loves it. And from what I see, it okay. fucking does. Yeah. Back in the day, that's the way it was. That's why, because I was just, I had a lot of energy. I had a, I had some free time because I only had a couple kids and I was just able to pump out stuff. And I did that for a long time and that it adds up. But I've noticed, yeah. you know, in these la last few, like this last year, yeah, it's like really affected it. But I'm, you know what? I'm just treading water right now, and in 2024, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it hard, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I, I, I am gonna wrap to this up now, just because we're quick. dropping viewers, uh, and it's it's starting. You know, we're kind of running out of things to talk about. But before you before you close it up, can I say something real quick? Yes, go for it. So for all the people that are watching right now, I think there's still 37. Um, it would help drone tech if you would actually join the discord because youtube's one thing but a lot of the background thoughts and the think tanking and the event planning and all that stuff all the ideas flow in the discord and if you could yep. become a part of that it would really help the end product that you guys appreciate and you get to have a say in it and appreciate it more and he actually does pay attention to the the republic of the people in his discord so you'd benefit and he would benefit if you guys would be willing to become a part of that and that's my two cents. Yeah, absolutely. Come and join the community. I, I you know, honestly, uh, the whole, my whole trail up to this point, uh, I started out in lots of different little communities that grew into big things. And that's, I've always been about that. And I think that in order to, you know, uh, it's one thing to be pumping out content, but if you have a community, that community can grow and you can actually spread ideas that you're trying to spread. And that's what I want to do. I don't want to just put out videos. I want to actually, you know, if I can make some change. And so I can only do that if you guys come here, join the community. And like RW said, add to the ideas uh, that this place is always brainstorming, always coming up with ideas and events and, and just ways that, you know, we can we can actually do something instead of just like he said, spinning our wheels. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm gonna ha go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Um, it was fun. I think we've been going for uh, a couple hours now, or about. And uh, man, so much thanks to Doc Holiday. Thank you so much, man. I know it's uh, you know, throwing your money at some random person on the internet. 
that's not something I do a lot. So I really appreciate it when, when somebody actually has enough faith in me that they'll do that. Really. As well as all the people that came and just hung out and, and made the chat light up and, you know, did some view time, some thumbs up and just chilling. Um, doc, uh, he asked, I don't know what a discord is. So yeah, discord is just a, it's, it's, a. If you don't have there, so it's just like on your phone where you can just use a website or the app, download the app. You can download the app. You don't have to. You can just use your browser. Just click the link. It puts you in a server, uh, our server, the drone technology underground server. And uh, you can just text chat with the group that's hanging out here, or you can get in voice chat. You can play games. There's built in games of Discord where you can join uh, the group, just any of these little channels, and play with the group. It's really easy, it's fun. And uh, actually, maybe uh, I might hang around and maybe we'll do something like that if everybody wants to, just to kind of show you what you can do here. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You guys should join. It's just something extra you can do. If you got nothing better going on, hey, if you want to just talk about a topic that's going on, look, you got a community here that's ready to go. And I got to tell you, these people that uh, are in this community are great. They're all great people. Many of them have been with me for going back forever. Cindy Ben, uh, I don't think she's in the Discord. She's in the chat right now. She was earlier. She's been here forever. So, yeah, check it out. If you, if you got nothing better to do uh, and you want to uh, join a group, we got it. Uh, yeah, real oh, quick, I I'm asking Nilly to drop an invite link for the chat. Otherwise, it's in the description. Uh, it's very at the one at the top with the frog head on it. Uh, it's You click the link, and it's going to send you either on your computer or your phone towards the app and... It's just, it's basically a community hangout app with voice chat and games. But we, Drone Tech and I use it to think tank and prep and chill. And it's the background that spins the wheels for his end content. Absolutely. RW has been a lot of, of help to me, uh, as well as Riddle and uh, many other uh, uh, people. And that's the score, so I really appreciate it. And it's fun. I don't I don't think we're gonna play games because I can hear up there that my wife definitely needs my help with the kids here getting them to bed. So I am I'll, gonna I'll uh, hang out. once I'm done with my chore list in like twenty minutes, I'll come back down and I'll hang out if anyone wants to chill. Tonight. Yeah, I might actually hang out and play some games. I'm just not gonna stream it. But uh if you guys wanna hang out and do anything, uh, I'm probably gonna be here for a little bit. And uh I thank you all for watching. Keep checking back. And uh, I should have a video tomorrow.